Hello everyone. In this presentation, I'm going to explain for you how to analyze Mendel's first and second experiment. So first of all, as you know, Mendel studied seven characteristics in pea plants. He studied the flower color, the flower position, the seed color, the seed shape, the pot shape, foot color, and the stem length. And for every characteristic, two traits existed. One of them was dominant and one was recessive. In this table here, we can see each characteristic and the two corresponding traits. The one at the top, it's the dominant and the recessive. The dominant and the recessive respectively, one by one. So in order to analyze Mendel's first experiment, we are going to take one example and study it. In this example, we are going to take the flower color. So as you know, in Mendel's first experiment, it was cross-pollination between two true breeding plants, two pure plants, each one with different color, and each one coming from uh, the same parents, same traits. In order to do that, Gregor Mendel prepared true breeding groups of plants. It means he allowed the plants to self-pollinate for many generations to make sure that the plants that he's going to use in the experiment are 100% purple and can give only purple and the same thing for the other plant 100% white and can give only white after he did the experiment all the generation all the members of the first generation which he called a fun generation were purple then he repeated in the second experiment he repeated self-pollination for each and every plant and what he got is a ratio of 3 to 1 or 75% purple and 1% 25% uh, white. Then he said that white is recessive and purple is dominant. So how can we explain the result of this uh, experiment in a clear and in a clear way? So let's start first of all taking the first experiment and analyzing it. So Mendel's first experiment. If I want to give a title for this this experiment, I would say it's a cross-pollination between two plants, two true breeding plants, or pure plants, or later on we'll start using homozygous, two true breeding plants with different traits for the same characteristic so this is the title for Mendel's first experiment again it's a cross-pollination between two plants true breeding plants for the same characteristic different trait so let's identify what is the characteristic and what is the trait for his experiment? So the characteristic for that we are going to discuss is flower color. And the two traits are purple and white I'm starting my explanation knowing that purple is dominant over white so the next step is we need to assign a symbol for each trait now usually we use the first uh, letter the first letter of uh, the trait but for now I'm not going to use uh, uh, the P because it will be confusing to write capital P and lower case P. Instead, I'm going to assign new letters for each one. So I can say here at the side, let capital A represent the purple allele or the purple trait. And at another note, let lowercase a represent 
the white element. Now, instead of you writing P, a y, a purple and white, I can write A and lowercase a. You can select any uh, letter, but avoid using letters where you can where you cannot distinguish between the capital and the lowercase. So avoid using S, for example. Avoid using uh, W. Avoid using uh, P, as we said. So you can use, for example, C as well. You can use A, B. Uh, uh, N, M, etc. So let's start analyzing Mendel's first experiment. So first of all, we need to start with the parents' generation. Okay. So as we said, it's purple. cross purple cross white and as we said both are homozygous or both are pure so now I can use instead this symbol in order to know it's the purple and it's the white okay so this one is called the P generation called the P generation the parental generation so first of all let's start by writing the phenotype and the genotype of each plant so the phenotype represents the appearance the phenotype is purple and for this plant is white Again, the phenotype is what appears, the feature that appears. Then we write the genotype. The genotype is the two alleles together. And how can we tell this based whether they are pure or hybrid, homozygous or heterozygous? We already said that those are true breeding, so they have the same alleles, AA, whereas here, AA. This is the genotype. Now, after that, We can write the gametes. According to Gregor Mendel, law of separation of gametes, every parent plant will give only one of its alleles. So this plant will give either one purple or another purple. In this case, it's 100% capital A, and here it's 100% lowercase. This is for the parents, P generation. Now, how can we predict the result of the offsprings? We can use Punnett square analysis. Okay, so what we do is we can simply write here Punnett square. Punnett square is used in order to predict the genotype and the phenotype of the offspring starting with the genotype of the parents so we need to write the possible alleles at one side of one parent and the other at another side of the other parent okay so in this case you need to match the alleles together and those represent the possible combinations between the alleles of the father and the alleles of the mother. So I have one, two, three, four choices. Four out of four are A, A. It means this is the fraction of the probability. It means one out of one A, A as a percentage, 100% A, A. And this is as for the genotype. And we can write the same for the phenotype. It's 4 out of 4 capital A. 
or four out of four purple and when we write purple we are talking about the phenotype now what is the ratio you know the ratio is two numbers that represent the relation between two variables so here I have four for every four purple I have zero white so as if it's one to zero the, the percentage of white is zero and this is the result that appeared in the Mendel's first experiment if we go back here all of them were purple no white and this generation is called F1 generation so this result here represent the F1 generation F1 generation all of them are AA okay so after Mendel did this experiment then he took these plants those plants who are homo heterozygous or hybrid and he allowed them to self pollinate so if I want to give a title for the second experiment it's going to be self pollination or self fertilization self fertilization of hybrid plants as simple as that okay I mean by hybrid having capital letter and lowercase letter two different elements so another name for it is F1 cross F1 again F is filial first filial generation F1 cross F1 so let's write the same order first of all we need to write the phenotype again the phenotype is the appearance so here it's purple cross purple again we are speaking about the same plant F1 cross F1 so it's the same plant doing cross pollination then the genotype as it appeared in the first experiment it's AA cross AA now after that we need to write the gametes the gametes is the possible gam alleles that might be inherited so we need to separate each allele to oneself again those represent the sperm and the egg or the opposite the sperm and the egg remember in meiosis we have seg segregation of chromosomes or we call it independent assortment where there is separation of the uh, chromatids in meiosis 2 okay so here this sperm might fertilize this egg or this sperm might fer fertilize this egg or this one with this one or this one with this one the easiest way to do it instead of matching them is to do the Punnett square in order to get the result in the F2 generation so let's do the Punnett square together again Punnett square must be used in each and every genetic uh, exercise even if you if you can tell the result without it it's better to use it so we put the alleles of one parent at one side and the other two at the other side now look at the matching between the look at the matching between the alleles here we have a capital with a capital here a capital with a small now you might you might say is a different from a a no it's not different it's totally the same it's the same okay but in order to make it easier for you in writing you can always put the cap capital letter at the left side so here it's a a and the last one is a a I'm writing it in white so that you know this is white okay now let's look at the result we have here this one 
AA is purple AA is purple as well because A is dominant or purple is dominant AA is purple and AA here let me write it in black so that you can see it AA this one is the only white flower or a plant with white flower and this appeared in F2 generation so it means the white skipped one generation it skipped off one appeared in F2 now let's let's write the result of F2 or let's analyze the Punnett square here in order to analyze the Punnett square each square in the Punnett square represents 25% each one 25% Okay, so we, when, we, when we, don't, uh, we want to write the result, we write it as first of all as a genotype. Then phenotype. Then I'm going to write down the ratio. So let's start with the genotype. Genotype, we have one A, A, A and we have A, A and A, A, right? Now, one out of four A, A, two out of four A, A, and one out of four lowercase a, lowercase a, which is 25%, 50%, and 25%. Okay, again, I'm analyzing, analyzing the results within the Punnett square. And the, the genotype ratio is going to be 1, 2, 1. Which means that for every one, capital A, capital A, there is one heterozygous and one homozygous recessive. What about the phenotype? The phenotype is either purple or white. I can write it purple or white, or even I can write it as like that okay how many purple I have one purple two and a three so three out of four purple and only one out of four is white remember this is only proportion this is not the actual number so when it comes to Mendel's experiment we will see now he did the experiment on hundreds of plants but the same ratio the same percentage so if I'm speaking about for example 100 plants around 25 of them will be white and the rest will be purple and what is the phenotypic ratio it's just three to one for every three purple I have one uh, white okay this is the F2 generation the results in F2 generation again this work is theoretical work now let's look at the actual work of Gregor Mendel This is the actual work of Gregor Mendel. Look at that. He did the experiment on each and every characteristic, height of the plant, tall cross short. In the first generation, all of them were tall, so tall is dominant. In the second generation, he got, look at that, 787 tall and 277 short. If, if we want to calculate the ratio, it's going to be 2.8 uh, 2.84 to 1 so approximately it's a 3 to 1 okay again how to calculate the ratio simply you can do that you can divide over the small number so if I want to get the ratio here I, I do 882 over 299 two points 299 over 299 this is how you can get the ratio okay it's going to be 2.95 to 1 again approximately it's a 3.1 and if we continue the same for every characteristic again for the pot color for example green cross yellow sorry green cross yellow green cross yellow 
green, all green, it means green is dominant. Again, he got 428 green and 152. The ratio is 2.82 to 1, approximately 3 to 1. And all these experiments gave almost the same ratio, which is close to 3 to 1. After he done these experiments and look at the numbers of the plants in this experiment, he counted 6,022 6, yellow and 2,001 green. So this ex these, those experiments proved uh, Mendel's uh, conclusions and explanation because it's, they were not done to, to 10 or 20 plants, thousands of plants. And as I mentioned before, Gregor Mendel, he grew around 28,000 plants, pea plants in his lifetime. Okay. So, after having all of this in mind, Mendel's first and Mendel's second experiment, we can come to a result that when we have a cross between two hybrid or two heterozygous plants, the ratio will be 3 to 1. Okay? So, some terminology that we can remember always, when we have two alleles that are the same, this is homozygous. dominant when we have two alleles that are not the same this is heterozygous and you already know that this color or this trait is going to appear because it's dominant and when we have two lowercase or two recessive alleles this is homozygous recessive and always for the recessive to appear it has to be homozygous. What do I mean? I mean, in our experiment that we explained, in order for a flower to be white, it has to be AA. Because if it is AA, it's going to be purple, not white, because purple is dominant. So again, those are Mendel's first and second experiment. And what applies to these two experiments is applied to all the Mendelian genetics. Always there is a dominant and a recessive trait and the dominant trait appears and masks the recessive trait. And whenever you are asked to do analysis, you have to follow the same order. You have to write the, gener the parents' generation, the phenotype of the parents, the genotype of the parents, then the gametes, then you put the gametes in a Punnett square, then after that you do the analysis as a genotype, phenotype, and ratio. And the same thing here, and this is applied for all Mandarian genetics. Thank you so much.